Pokemon Scarlet and Violet release next week, so before that happens, I thought it'd be fun to make a hopes and predictions video. Once the games do finally come out, we can laugh and see just how wrong or right I truly was. I know I'll be ridiculed for months on end, flooded with comments saying that this didn't age well and whatnot, but if I am right, I'll be called a prophet. I'm taking a chance here, and for the record, I won't be mentioning any leaks because that'd be lame, and also because I'm not aware of them. Well, for starters, let's start with Sprigatito. In my original video talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I said I wasn't too fond of Sprigatito. I thought it was okay, but now I think it's pretty cute, even if its eyes are a little crooked. I can't unsee it now, and you can't either. Pretty sure it's gonna start walking on two legs though when it evolves, but hopefully we get something cool like a Puss in Boots type thing with cool hat, grass sword, and of course the boots, and hopefully not furry bait. It's gonna be furry bait. My guess for the typing is grass dark. I feel like it's gonna become mischievous, like most cats. White Coco was immediately my starter of choice, and still is my starter of choice. I mean, just look at how stubby it is. It's adorable. I originally called it an apple, but the people in the comment section quickly made it apparent that it's actually a pepper, and I'm a huge fan of that. I'm really hoping that Foot Coco turns into a ghost pepper when it evolves. Why ghost pepper specifically? A fire ghost type pepper Pokemon would be such a smart thing to do, and this is their time to finally do it. I just hope that they don't ruin it somehow. On the Pokemon website, it says that it sprouts more flames on the top of its head. Interesting word choice there. I was originally kind of fond of Quaxly, but I slowly grew to not like it as much. I'm not even sure why. It's an okay design, but I just don't like it as much anymore. I feel like Quaxly is going to evolve into a pirate duck. I mean, looking at its hair, it seems to resemble a sailor hat, and I think having it turn into a pirate is the correct course to sail towards. The straw hats would be proud. And I mean, come on, who doesn't like pirates? Intense know that too. For the typing, I'd have to say probably water fighting because this would fit into the trio best. Dark ghost and fighting can almost work as a starter trio, but ghost doesn't really have an advantage over fighting sorta. It's super cool, so I don't care. The real question though is which one do I think will be the best in competitive? Well, given my lack of knowledge of what the starters will become, I choose Fuecoco. I just get this feeling the stubby little creature thing is gonna pack a punch when it evolves, though I think it'd be really funny if I'm hyping it up only to find out later that it's the worst one out of the three. Overall though, I think this is a pretty solid starter trio. All three of them are pretty viable options. For now, we just have to wait and see what kind of abominations these things actually turn into. I have no idea if I'm saying this right, but Katayden, the terror whale Pokemon. It looks horrifying, and I can just tell that this is going to be a single stage evolution with no pre-evolution. I mean, just look at it. I'd love to be proven wrong though. I mean, this thing sort of looks cool, I guess. Look at Fido. I want like 20 on my team. It's a doe dog. What's not to love about it? And look at the way it waddles. I wonder what kind of pastry it'll evolve into. The obvious choice would be donut, but if it evolved into a loaf dog or like a bagel or cinnamon roll or something, I'd be happy to. So many possibilities. I want to pet one, it'd be so squishy. No way they named a Pokemon Lechonk. It was funny when I first saw it, but now the joke is just overused and stale. Like, haha, Lechonk, get it, guys? Guys? Aside from the name, I don't really like the design too much, but it'd be cool if it evolved into like a warthog or something. Cerulege has to be my favorite Pokemon out of this generation so far, or maybe just in general. It looks so cool that I'm a huge fan of the flaming ghost swords. I also really like that it's willing to do anything to win. Tax fraud, armed assault, you name it, he'll do it. It gives me mercenary vibes, and I predict that this Pokemon will be insanely good. Armor Rouge isn't as cool as Cerulege, but that isn't to say that it's lame. It's got the Mega Man Mega Buster thing going on, and I think that's really cool. Never thought I'd see the day where a Pokemon looks like a robot master. I didn't really like Bellybot at first, but the more I saw it, the more I began to like it. It's honestly pretty cool. I really like the electric organ thing that it has going on, and its ability might make battles a little more interesting. Its ability is electromorphosis, and whenever it gets hit, it powers up the next electric type attack it uses. I feel like if you made this thing tanky and really slow, it could sweep teams with ease, as long as it has a good special attack. Cyclozar is just basically the budget legendaries. If Maridon is the future, and Coridon is the past, does that make Cyclozar the present? I'm pretty sure that this is just the pre-evolution to the box legendaries, sort of like Cosmog was for Solgaleo and Lunala. I don't really like its design though, it looks really stupid to me, but maybe I'll grow to like it, who knows. I really like what they decided to name Giraffe Rig's evolution. It's for Rigoraf, that's really weird to say. Basically all they did was swap the G's for F's and the A's for I's. That way its name is still a palindrome. I really like how the other head fused with the main head to make this really cool design. It's gone full chain chomp mode. They'll destroy the world with the power of friendship. I really like the idea of a graffiti Pokemon, but Grafai Eye looks a little weird to me. Every time I look at Grafai Eye, I always think it's like a bug thing despite it being a monkey. I'm not really sure what this thing would evolve into, but 
I hope it's really cool. Grievard is objectively the inferior dog Pokemon in this region. I really like Fido. I think it's a funny doe dog, but Grievard to me looks kind of boring. It looks like if Litwick was glued onto a dog's head. I hope this isn't a single stage evolution, but it really does look like one to me. Every time I look at Cloth, I get Crab Tank from Splatoon 3 vibes, which I guess does make sense. It's a crab after all. This looks like a final stage evolution to a two stage Pokemon line, and I'm not really happy with its design. It looks a little too goofy. Paldean Wooper is awesome. I like that they made it live in a swamp and gave it the poison typing. Now its head looks like a skull and crossbones. I'm really interested to see what Paldean Quagsire looks like. Maybe it'll look scary, because if it looks exactly like the normal Quagsire, that'd be kind of lame. Apparently, despite all similarities, Wiglet has no relation to Diglett. Yeah, I thought this was a Paldean Diglett at first, but I guess not. I do like it though, it looks funny to me. But again, I really hope the evolution isn't just a Doug Trio, but with Wiglets instead. Here's the token Pikachu Pokemon of the region, Pommy. I think this is my least favorite Pokemon so far in this region. Its proportions just look weird to me. Like its head is too small and its hands are too big, and this thing has just been done to death already. Oh boy, another electric mouse Pokemon that's small and has static. How original. Smoliv is another one of my favorites of the region. Smoliv looks so scared and its 3D model looks really nice and colorful. This is your standard early route plant grass type Pokemon, but I hope when it evolves it actually looks like a fully evolved Pokemon instead of whatever the hell Eldegoss is. While editing this video, two more forms for Donphan were announced, so let's just get them over with. There's a past and future form for Donphan. I know I'm gonna get some hate for this, but I actually don't mind the future form. It reminds me of a battle bot or something. Overall, I think that the Pokemon we've seen so far have been relatively good. I'm really excited to see what other Pokemon Game Freak has cooked up for us. Hiraidon and Miraidon are the two box legendaries this time around. Hiraidon looks like a furry OC, which isn't really my thing, but Miraidon looks so cool. It's a dragon mech thing and has electricity around it. What's not to love? Turns out the prediction that they were based off of motorcycles was correct, because we won't be seeing the bike again this time around. But this thing isn't just a motorcycle. It can fly. This is just Mario Kart 7 all over again. Can't wait for the next game where they introduce an underutilized anti-gravity gimmick. I really hate that Hiraidon goes through all that trouble of turning into a motorcycle just to end up using its legs anyway. Like, why? I know that the two legendaries are supposed to be past and future, but if that's the case, why make it a motorcycle? It kind of reminds me of the Master Cycle. The legendaries have three modes that you'll be able to use in the overworld. Sprinting build slash drive mode, swimming build slash aquatic mode, and gliding build slash glide mode for Coridon and Maridon respectively. Also, they can run up walls. Guess ledges don't matter anymore. This game takes place in the Paldea region, and I really like how the map looks so far. It looks filled with interesting places to go. The only problem is that apparently the gyms don't scale with your level, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of the game being open world. The open world in this game game though is going to be insane, and you're going to be able to play 4 player multiplayer in real time. Pokemon fans have been waiting for this to become a thing for years. This is a long overdue feature and I'm so happy that we'll finally be receiving this. I just really hope it's executed well and I'm really scared they're going to mess it up. Originally I was actually going to go for Pokemon Scarlet, but after seeing Wilma Flintstone in a Game Freak Devs furry OC, I think I'm going to go with Violet. Plus the future just seems so much cooler than the past, so I don't really mind. And there's a lot of good Violet exclusives, so yeah why not jump ship. The real the real question is, how many Pokemon will there be in this generation? I'm honestly really scared to know the actual answer to this. The recent Pokemon games have had less new Pokemon added than in previous generations. Generation 6 had 72 Pokemon, Generation 7 had 88, and Generation 8 brought 96. That may sound like a lot, but in previous generations, on average, they'd bring around 130 Pokemon. This isn't necessarily a bad thing though. A lot of newer Pokemon have really clever designs and concepts, so I'm assuming most of the effort is going into fleshing out each Pokemon rather than making as many as possible, but my exact number prediction is 84. Why 84? I just chose a random number. Okay, but seriously, we haven't seen many new Pokemon revealed yet, and maybe that's for a reason. I think the fan favorite character is going to be the electric type gym leader from Lavencia, Iono. She has that whole VTuber streamer thing going on, and people love VTubers, so I'm assuming they'll flock to Iono as well. Personally, I never got into VTubers, but I at least know of them. Aside from that, though, I think she has a cool design. I like her hoodie that she stole from Splatoon 2 from me, and she wasn't the only one who stole it, Nintendo did as well. Where is it in Splatoon 3? Where's my eggplant mountain coat? I just want my main gear back! For my next prediction, which version do I think will sell more? Well, I don't think this is even a prediction. Without a doubt, it will be Pokemon Violet. From what we've seen so far, Violet has the better exclusives. How long will the game be? I think the game will be around 35-ish hours of content. Something kind of concerns me though. Since the game is sort of open world and there is no specific destination you have to go to first, 
how are you going to receive the legendaries? In the trailer, they seem to put heavy emphasis on the legendaries being your mode of transportation, so it's likely you'll be receiving them pretty early on in the game. There's no problem with that, but I just don't want people to use them to make the game a cakewalk. You may be saying, oh, well, why do you care how other people play the game? Well, because some IGN reviewer is going to say, the game's too easy, despite literally using the box art legendary on their team and probably something else stupid. I can guarantee it. The character designs have been pretty hit or miss for me. Either they look really cool or they're just flat out terrible. I still hate the main characters designed with a passion. Thankfully, we're able to customize our characters clothes. Shame we can't do anything about their punchable faces though. They look like something straight out of Doke V. I really like Nimona's design in the artwork. I can't express how much I hate the trainer 3D models. They look so creepy to me. Grusha is the ice type gym leader. I really like his design, but when he first got revealed, Twitter was losing it because he's not a woman. Best thing to do is just sit back and watch the mayhem. While you're sitting back, go ahead and take the time to follow me. I'll wait. Brasius is a grass type gym leader, and he gives me Hubert from Fire Emblem vibes. Mostly with the face though. Not a huge fan of his design as a whole. Gita is the chairman of the Pokemon League, and I really do not like her design at all. She has really creepy oversized eyes, a scary lanky figure, and giant hair that does not help her lanky figure at all. She just looks really disproportionate to me, I guess. Mila is Team Star's boss, and she's okay. I don't hate her design, but I also don't like it. I really hope her along with Team Star isn't a boring team, just like how Team Yell was. I was incredibly disappointed with Team Yell. They did absolutely nothing. I don't really like Penny's hairstyle, but other than that, she has a pretty good design. But now it's time for the worst of the worst. I hate Jack. His hair looks really stupid and it looks like he'd be really clumsy. But we'll just have to wait and see how he is. It'd be kind of ironic if he turns out to be my favorite. Clavel looks rich and privileged. Also, he doesn't seem like he'd be really interesting. Why does Arvin have an emo mullet? I'm not a fan of his hairstyle at all. It doesn't matter how good or bad the designs are though, because one thing I still can't get over are the 3D models. No matter how bad I thought Sword and Shield's graphics were, the one thing they did right were the character models for the trainers. They're exactly how I envisioned a Switch Pokemon game to be like, but now we have these Doke V type trainers and I'm not down with it at all. They look so uncanny and creepy. I don't like the nose and blush. It just all looks too strange and different from what we've seen from previous Pokemon games, but thankfully, and I really mean this, they changed how they look. This is such a huge improvement. I'm so happy that Game Freak actually decided to listen to their fans and, you know, make a right move. I absolutely love how the Pokemon models look in this game, and especially the environments. People have been saying they're bad, but I think they're pretty good. Terra typings are the new gimmick in this generation, and honestly, it seems really fun to use. Any Pokemon can become any typing, which can lead to some pretty interesting situations. Can't wait to see how the competitive scene responds to this new change. You can make sandwiches in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Is that a bad thing that I actually kind of like this feature? I can be a Subway employee in Pokemon. Can't wait to mess up someone's order. And by far, the most crucial prediction of all, will the games be good? I'm gonna go all in and saying, yeah, the games so far look pretty amazing. They've taken what they've learned from Legends Arceus and implemented it into Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, sure, not everything's back, but this is a huge step in the right direction. When looking at Sword and Shield, it's apparent just how big of a leap this game is taking. Of course, people will always find something to complain about, and in some ways, I agree. Pokemon is the highest grossing franchise in the world, so their quality in games really should be much higher, but remember, graphics aren't everything. There's still plenty of fun to be had, even if the games don't meet your standards. Regardless of where you stand on the matter though, it's almost scary how far we've come. But if you want to know something even scarier, you should watch my video about who the Lumio City Ghost Girl really is. Remember to subscribe. Take care everyone.